Scootaloo took a few steps backwards into the darkness and acted surprised, preparing for the trap door to open underneath her. She dropped down with great agility as the floor disappeared and landed in a sort of metal cage a few feet lower. A cloud of dust was blown out of the mine entrance above her as the metal press came down to fill the mine and cover the entrance. Scootala knew that for the audience it wouldn't look like metal at all, as they had decorated the outside with what would appear to be stones and rocks to them. Ow! She grimaced as she landed, the bars on the bottom of the cage biting into her hooves. She looked down and frowned. There used to be a large piece of wood covering the bottom of the metal cage, but it was nowhere to be found. There was a great, round plastic tub underneath the cage, which Scootaloo couldn't remember seeing before either. Then again, she mused, the wooden plank would have naturally kept it out of sight. She quickly tugged on a few key strings in her outfit with her teeth, undoing the knots one by one. Since those knots kept the entire outfit together, it wasn't long before she could simply shake it off. It looked very cool, but it was very uncomfortable to move around in. She decided to just leave the outfit there for now. After all, she wasn't able to go back to the dressing room until the show was over, and she sure wasn't dragging it around with her. She, she reached out to the cage door and attempted to push it open. But to her great surprise, it wouldn't budge. She pushed against it for a while and they threw her and then threw her shoulder into it, which she instantly regretted, but still it would not open. Turning around, she bucked her hind legs at the door in an attempt to force open the lock. But she may as well not have bothered. All she ended up doing was sending some banging noises e echoing throughout the area. Dumb door! If I find out who locked this thing, I'm going to- She hissed in frustration when cheerily suddenly emerged from the darkness, Scootaloo's head about level with hers for once. Cheerily simply smiled at the failure as she approached the cage, not saying a single word. Miss Cheerily, I wasn't going to say anything bad, honest. Just that I'm going to be very upset with the pony who locked the door, that's all. She said sheepishly, at least Miss Cheerily would probably be able to get her out of there. She started to feel somewhat uncomfortable, as Cheerily just stood there unmoving, her features still obscured by the darkness that reigned supreme under the stage. Oh, I get it. <laughs> it was a joke. That's great, Miss Cheerily. You obviously haven't lost your touch for pranks yet. Now, uh, could you please let me out? The young filly asked pleadingly, not sure what to make of the mare's strange behavior. Cheerily nodded enthusiastically as she stepped forward and a wide toothy grin split her face. Something about the look in her teacher's eyes shocked Scootaloo deeply. It felt as if she saw nothing but hatred and contempt in those big green globes. Cheerily reached out for a lever on the wall and pulled it down slightly. And suddenly, the mass of metal above Scootaloo's head started to inch its way down towards her at a steady pace. The little filly suddenly didn't feel comfortable in the cage anymore, and she let out a little squeal of terror. Wait, what's going on? Please stop! This isn't funny anymore, Miss Cheerily! I want to get out! Let me out! Cheerily brought her face close to the cage to stare at Scootaloo relishing in the terror she was inflicting upon one of the little monsters that had tormented her for so long. I thought you said you wanted to get out of the cage. This'll get you out, you little weed. Just watch. Scootaloo's brave facade finally broke as tears started streaming down her face. No, you c can't do this. Every pony will n know. Th they'll find out. Abaloom and Sweetie Belle will come to look for me and... Cheerily interrupted the frantic filly as she burst into genuine laughter. <laughs> you fool! Those friends of yours are next! And as for the others, you let me worry about that, okay? 
You have different problems. Cheerily nodded up at the wall, of iron still inching down. There was now less than half of the original amount of space left between it and the bottom of the cage. The little filly screamed as she lifted her front legs above her head, pushing up against the metal, threatening to crush her against the bottom of the cage. The brass protested with some metallic screeching noises and shuddered for a moment, and then almost came to a complete stop. With the machine pushing down on her, and her pushing up to halt its pros progress, the pressure on the hooves that remained on the bottom of the cage was immense. She whimpered as the thin, rectangular metal strips slowly started to crack them. But she didn't dare move for fear of being crushed. The machine did not relent and the cracks grew wider and wider, wider making her pant with pain as cheerily stood and watched. Finally, she she let out a scream as her ho as her hooves broke and the thin bars got driven up into her flesh Bl blood slowly starting to boil up around the metal and dripping down into the tub underneath scootaloo bit down onto her lip as she panted from the immense pain that washed over her as the blunt bars broke her skin tearing and pulling at her flesh Please, please, stop, please, I'll, I'll be good, I swear. She managed to get out between the gasps for air and the cries of pain that otherwise escaped her mouth. Eight months, eight months! Cheerily suddenly screeched out in fury, abruptly switching over from laughter to anger in the blink of an eye. That's how much time you had to show a glimmer of intelligence. And you failed. In a fit of rage, Cheerily pulled down the level a bit more. And the metal press instantly started to push down even harder. Trying to crush Scootaloo even faster. For the good of all flowers in the world, weeds like you must die. Scootaloo tried to cry out as the metal bars were driven through. Driven through the fleshy parts of her hoofs. The metal angrily coming to a grinding halt against the bones in her legs. But instead of screams, all that came out of her mouth was a disgusting, gurgling sound, followed by waves of bile and vomit as the unearthly pain turned her stomach upside down and nearly made her black out on the spot. The foul and sour substance splattered all over the floor of the cage and dribbled down Scootaloo's body from her mouth, joining the streams of blood as they tumbled into the tub below. The only thing keeping her, keeping her conscious was the copious amounts of adrenaline her body was pumping into her system in a desperate attempt to try and survive the ordeal. Cheerily took a few quick steps back as the vomiting started to avoid getting any of it on her hooves. That'd be simply distasteful. The machine continued pushing Scootaloo down, and she already had to bend slightly forward as she began hysterically pushing up with her shoulders and head as well, grinding her hooves into the meadow below even more. Her legs shook violently, and she knew they would be unable to take the pressure much longer. The bars of the cage floor ground against her, her bare bones, and then slowly began to crack. Scootaloo screamed in wordless terror, pain, and hysteria once more, her mind filled only with the red-hot feeling of pain emanating not only from her heavily mutilated hooves, but also from the rest of her body. Her throat was raw and coarse from all the screaming and vomiting, blood dripping out of the corners of her mouth and her upper legs, shoulders and neck were all feeling the strain from pushing up against the metal. Suddenly the strain became too much for her little pony legs as the bones in her hooves snapped. 
The metal strips shot up through her legs as the metal plate pushed her down, cleaving through her young, soft flesh like butter and splitting her overstressed bones nearly in two. The new pain, a hundred times worse than all that had come before, sent her into a new fit of vomiting. But all that would come out was a was a puddle of blood that she spat all over herself. Her body couldn't handle the sensory overload, and she teetered on the brink of a blackout. But every new bone that snapped pulled her right back out of the sweet embrace of darkness, and the blunt metal bar shot up through her so fast now that there was hardly any time to fall unconscious at all. At all. Blood splattered down into the tub, where it pooled into a lake alongside of, of various other bodily fluids, with more blood leaking out of Scootaloo's legs, as if she were an opened bottle of tomato juice someone was holding upside down. The room swam before her eyes, and she was too weak to continue screaming. Her four legs started to give out, and would soon lose their strength as she started to drift out of consciousness in earnest. Then suddenly, after what seemed to Scootaloo as a sentry after the meadow had broken through her first bone, although in reality only a few moments, the metal plate stopped pressing down and actually moved up a little bit as Cheerilee pushed the level up, an insane look of glee on her face. Scootaloo now unable to brace her weakened body against anything as the metal plates slipped out of reach, tumbled backwards onto the bottom of the cage. The metal bars... <sighs> The metal bars were still stuck halfway up her legs, holding them in place. Her weakened legs couldn't handle the strain as she toppled backwards into a physically impossible position, and with a horrendous scream and torrents of blood, Scootaloo's legs simply broke off in the middle, muscles and ligaments tearing off of the bones as they broke right around the weak point the metal bars had created. She had thought the worst pain had been over, but for the second time in a few minutes, she had been proven wrong. There had been a pain worse than what she'd been going through, and this was it. She almost barfed of blood all over herself again when she looked down at the part of her mangled legs that was still attached, as well as the little bloody stumps sticking up above the cage's floor but she didn't seem to have any in her anymore. Her body had grown pale due to the copious amounts of blood she had lost and was still losing. She, and she'd probably die within the next few minutes, even if a fully equipped medical team appeared on the scene right then and there. Cheerily stood with her left hoof on the lever, panting heavily and shaking with pure excitement completely unable to keep the ecstasy she felt at her twisted dreams finally coming true out of her voice as she spoke. Any last words, my little weed? Scootaloo could hardly hear her through the ungodly amounts of pain she was in. As death started to wrap her in his cold embrace, her body had lost so much fluids by now that she couldn't even mangle, manage a cry as she thought about what she'd like to say to Rainbow Dash. Like being sorry that she'd never grow up to be the flyer Rainbow Dash thought she could be. Instead, all that came out of her mouth was a low gurgling and another pool of blood. I guess not. Who'd want to hear it anyway? Cheerily yelled almost hysterically as she pulled the lever completely down. The little filly saw the metal plate storm down at her like a battering ram, her body too weak for a bigger reaction than her feeble attempt to raise her f front hooves up to shield her head. With a sickening crash, the machine pounded down onto the filly, driving her entire p 
body into the bars below. The crash was so sickeningly loud that even Cheerily closed her eyes and turned her head away for a moment as she brought up a hoof protectively. She could feel warm blood splatter against her face and body and opened an eye tentatively. The metal press now filled the entire cage and Scootaloo was nowhere to be found. Blood splatters could be seen in a wide radius around the cage and blood dripped down the side of the tub to make puddles on the floor. With her legs shaking in excitement, Cheerily approached the tub taking care not to step into any of the puddles. For a moment, she just stared down into the Sanjuan Lake, amazed that there had been so much stuff packed into the tiny filly's body. Various chunks of flesh and bone floated around in the grotesque sea like tiny boats. Cheerily angled her head to look at the bottom of the cage and saw little bits and pieces of Scootaloo still trapped between the metal plate and the bars of the cage. But apart from those and the huge scarlet stain on the metal, no sign of the filly ever having been in the cage remained. Cheerily licked her lips while surveying the scene once more, but suddenly stopped as the bitter taste of iron entered her mouth. She had forgotten she got blood all over herself as well, but it tasted surprisingly good. This must be what they meant when they talked about the sweet taste of vengeance. Cheerily mused as she licked her lips and, che and cheeks clean. She spotted Scootaloo's eyes floating around in the lake of blood, staring up unseeingly at the ceiling. She couldn't help but crack up and laugh hysterically, even as she went to get cleaned up. Even long after she got the very last splatters of blood out of her coat, the visible ones anyway, she just couldn't stop. She hadn't seen something this amusing all year. Cheerily finally got back to her spot in the prompt corner, still giddy with excitement. She stared at the stage without really seeing it, and it took her a few moments to notice that she hadn't started paying attention to the play at all yet. She was still savoring Scootaloo's last moments in her mind's eye. She shook her head a few times to get a grip, and focused on the stage in front of her. Once she did that, it didn't take her long to figure out what scene they were currently on. And she really had to suppress another rash of excitement as she realized her next playtime wasn't all that far off. <laughs>